As uh, Marios's report there shows the problems in Lebanon continue. Let's bring in for analysis Sir Halim uh, Shabaya, the outgoing MENA director, that's Middle East North Africa director at Crisis Action. Halim, thank you very much for being with us. We appreciate your time. And just to sort of add more to the context, there was uh, a report that Saad Hariri, the um, previous uh, prime minister, was about to be reappointed uh, to the job that he left back in October. And I'm wondering how, how this could even be part of the equation, Satiri returning. Why could that happen? Good evening. Yeah, and uh, just to note, I'm speaking in my capacity as a political analyst, uh, not uh, in my capacity as a, for crisis action. Um, well, as you mentioned, I think it's really mind-boggling in some ways that two months ago, a uh, revolutionary movement started on the 17th of October, and um, uh, Mr. Hariri resigned on the 29th of October, that's seven weeks ago, and suddenly here we are two months into these protests, and um, we get back the name of the very person who was asked to resign by the people. And this is why we saw protests in the last two days by uh, the revolutionary movement uh, saying that uh, the name of Mr. Hariri is not accepted, uh, namely because the demand is for a technocratic government. What that means in practice is to get independent uh, figures who are able to regain the trust of both the international community, of investors, of foreign investors, of Arab investors, and of the Lebanese people. So we're really in a bit of a quagmire. Uh, especially also when we get to the parliamentary consultations that are obligatory as per the Constitution. Uh, they still haven't taken place and the demands from the uh, protests are for them to take place as soon as possible. But what we are seeing is uh, the confusion of the political class uh, in the sense that uh, they're, uh, they, uh, they warn the people of a civil war or they warn the people of a chaos or they warn the people of you know, further economic crisis and the only solution they present is for them them and for this, the same leaders to be recycled. Um, and at this moment, really, we're part of a, there's an arm wrestling game among, between the president, uh, between the out, uh, the caretaker, the current caretaker, Prime Minister uh, uh, Saad Hariri, who ha was chosen, so to speak, by the Sunni community in Lebanon uh, to be the, the favorite candidate. And at this moment, we're part, uh, the, the, on the level of the constitutional uh, level, we're dealing really with an issue of constitutional legitimacy, so to to speak, because in Lebanon, uh, there is no, according to the Constitution, there is no legitimacy to an authority that contradicts the pact of coexistence. So what that means is that uh, all the communities have to be represented. And today, uh, part of the reason that was stated uh, behind the postponement was the fact that the two main Christian parties, the Free Patriotic Movement, the party of the president and the foreign minister, uh, Gibran Basile, and the Lebanese forces were not going to vote for uh, Saad Hariri. So he decided to wait and he got a postponement of three days, which I don't know if uh, we will get a good news in the coming 72 hours. This quagmire that you've spoken about, though, it's hardly likely to um, stop the anger on the streets. In your opinion, what is likely or most likely to happen next? I think it's, it's extremely hard to uh, predict anything with uh, certainty uh, in Lebanon, and especially with what we've seen in the last two months. But if you, I think there are two really schools of thought, if you'd like to put it that way. One school of thought is the school of thought of the status quo parties, of the political elite, uh, against whom the people are revolting. And for them, the only solution they can uh, come back to is to say, we br will bring back the strong man, so to speak, from the Sunni community, who has good relations with the Arab world and the international community, and he will, and that government will bring back a bit of stability. Now, that caretaker uh, prime minister, uh, Mr. Saad Hariri, wants a uh, ministry of technocrats. Now, on the other hand, you have this uh, second school of thought, so to speak, the revolutionary movement, the intifada, so to speak, the anti-status quo movement that wants fresh faces. And the reason is very simple. You have a country that after 30 years by various parties, and each party obviously has uh, blame from a certain year, uh, has really led the country to the state that we are in. And in any reasonable solution usually would uh, necessitate that there would be some new, fresh, independent faces. And there's always that argument being presented that there are no alternatives. And I think anybody who has been to Lebanon, who knows the Lebanese people, will not buy that argument that there are no 
uh, independent, competent figures who can take uh, certain ministries, including the prime ministry. So let's say there is one name that was presented among many, uh, the, the name of Mr. Nawaf Salam, for example, the previous UN ambassador, uh, the Lebanese ambassador to the UN. So he's a Sunni who can be named by Hariri if Hariri chooses to name an independent uh, uh, candidate and who might get the, uh, uh, so to speak, the approval from the street because he was not part of the government. He wasn't a minister before and he has so to speak a clean record uh, on that level and that also goes to say when we get to the ministers also that there are some fresh faces that can come in and at least bring back a bit of trust so in terms of what will happen next it's really anybody's guess but if you'd want to take the safe bet you'd say that the, our Lebanese political class will repeat the same mistakes and bring back perhaps Mr. Hariri who will try to form a government and who, who will be unable to form a government and we will go into a deadlock for a very long time if I'd want to uh, be optimistic I'd say Mr. Hariri will seize this and make a historic decision and say he will back an independent candidate from the Sunni community who will be accepted by both the Sunni community and the street and who will form a government with really no faces from the previous political elite that has ruled us and that has gotten us to the state we are in now. Halim Shabaya, thank you very much indeed uh, for that uh, very thorough analysis of uh, all the possibilities uh, that lay ahead there in Lebanon. Thank you so very much for joining us here on France 24.